Hello everyone, so in this tutorial I will be going over grisaille painting. Um, so a grisaille painting is something we're going to be doing in painting one. Uh, we are, this is one of the first painting that we're going to start with. So um, with the grisaille painting, it's basically an achroma achromatic painting that deals with black and white. So you're just dealing with a grayscale and you're dealing with values of one through nine. So depending on what you are maybe painting, sometimes you can deal with a value scale of one through five or one through 12, but we are dealing with one through nine. So as you can see, I am going to do a small painting. I think this is a five by five painting on our um, oil and canvas paper. I do have a primed gray um, in Primatura. Um, so uh, I, I basically just came in with my gray gesso. Um, I got my drawing in, so I don't know if you guys can see there is a glare from the light that's in front of my still life um, that's shining into the camera. Um, but I have my um, proportion box in for my drawing. I actually used a um, a pencil, so I did, I did use a darker pencil. <clears throat> probably like a 4B or 6B um, but I came in with my proportion box I also came in with um, my lips so I have a box for my lips to get my lips accurate for my little kids cup as well as I got my ellipses in for the top of the, the cup as well as um, a little bit of a curve in the lips for uh, the neck of the cup as well so um, I don't know if you guys can see it but I'm gonna try and just describe as much as I can but uh, you can see that my proportion box in I have a center line and I also changed my center line because I'm looking at my object from a three-quarter view um, as well as um, you can see some areas where I'm using plumb lines um, or level lines um, to just make sure I'm mirroring on one side and on the other and things are adding up and making just a bit more of sense so there is a little construction within this one item drawing. Um, I started with a drawing um, and then once I got the drawing in, I separate it, which you can see what's in my light mass and also my dark mass. You always want to connect this cast shadow. This is the one step that I feel like young students in my class always, always um, skip over. <laughs> and I, I really never know how or why or what may happen uh, to trigger the brain to say, skip over this step. This is a very important step. You always want to make sure that you're separating your light mass from your dark mass. So last week, you guys, we went over um, four different types of underpainting. Um, so this type of underpainting where I'm just using two values to separate my light mass from my dark mass is what I normally use because um, I just I really just need a clear separation and I'm good to go from there. But um, in class, it really is up to you how you want to start your underpainting. The reason why I did this one because I know that it's going to dry the fastest um, and it's quicker to get down and, and really you just need to know uh, that clear separation. So what I use to get in my dark mass, just to kind of block it in because it's just blocking in that, sh that shadow mass, um, I use my fine detail liquid in. Um, so the fine detail liquid in, I actually thinned out my paint with that. So I probably have way more fine de detail liquid in than I do have paint because I really wanted to have a transparent layer. That way I can see, still see my drawing and the construction that's under that separation because that's definitely going to help me to get this painting down. So although this is a grisaille painting, I'm doing this bit painting all in one day. So you will hear the term and we will do these type of paintings, even more of them. But I'm going to do a, um, a la prima. So I'm doing everything all in one day. I don't know how much of this I'm going to get done, but I'm just going to try and get it as close to done as possible. Because really this is just a demo and it's just, I, I just need students to see how to start it, how to get through the process and get close to it in product. Um, but of course in class you guys, you're going to complete yours. Um, so in class I'm thinking about having you guys paint small, probably as small as this as a 5x5. Five five because I really just want you guys to complete a painting in class to help you with your homework assignment. And that's very important because the more practice you get, guess what? The easier your homework is and you have a clear understanding of how to do your homework. Alright you guys, so 
now that I have this separated, um, I know this isn't completely dry, but because I came in very thin with that fine detail, I still should be able to kind of paint over um, what I have in my shadow mask. So before I get started with painting, um, I just kind of want to give an idea or at least let you know what I'm going to do first um, because once I start painting I'm going to get quiet that way I can do a time lapse of it and that way the process can move a lot faster um, when it comes to this um, demo. Alright so what I'm going to do is I always start in my background and I move forward. So I'm going to start in my background, I'm going to get my table ground in. Then I'm going to work in my shadow mask of my object and then I'm going to work in my light mask of my object. Um, so I do have my value scale already pre-mixed. So I have a um, value scale of 1 through 9 so you can see my white and you can see my black and you can see my grays all in between. So I already got my value scale pre-mixed. I have a range of brushes so I have rounds and I also have my um, bright brush which is the short flat I also have a small flat brush um, and this is a tool that I know you guys probably are seeing in my um, demos and you're like what is that <laughs> um, this is actually a tool for um, from my understanding for sculptors um, and possibly some ceramic uh, students use this tool as well but um, in painting I use this tool um, and even when I was a student we use this tool to just scrape out so if you put something down in oils and you're like okay that's not working out you can use this tool to kind of scrape out whatever you start painting and you kind of paint over a little area that you like I want to come in with a highlight you can scrape out with that as well so this is kind of a I use it and um, I used it in the past when I was a student as more of a scraping out tool than anything um, so this is a good tool to have if you're making a mistake and you just kind of want to wipe it all out or scrape it out you could definitely do that all right guys so you're gonna see my process I'm gonna start from the back to the table ground then I'm gonna work on the object like I said um, I'm gonna do my best to get it as finished as possible but I am gonna do a a la prima which is basically all in one day um, and then uh, I will let it dry after that. <laughs> That's all I can do. So I'm going to get started. Hey everybody, so I'm going to do just a little bit of a voiceover. I just want to talk just a little bit about my process. So um, when I'm using my oil paint, I am not putting in any uh, Gamsol in it. I'm doing my background with uh, a gradation. So normally on our uh, light mask side, you want your background to be dark. On our uh, shadow mask side, you want your background to be light or a darker mid-tone. Um, so I start with my background. Um, and then I'm also using a fan brush to blend out right now. So I just want to get a little bit of the paint texture out. Um, I just want to have a smooth, uh, a smooth transition from one value to the next. Now I'm working on... Uh, my table ground so normally uh, your background and your table ground for your table ground You want to start from dark to light your background is kind of the same thing from dark to light So as you move down it gets lighter um, as you move up It gets a little bit darker same thing for the background right now and the background is a little bit darker as you move forward It's a little bit um, lighter um, And you, of course you're going to have a little bit more of a light transition where your light is hitting um, for your table ground so even here, I'm still um, blending and using a little bit of my brush, and I'm leaving some of my brush strokes. So I like to push and pull texture, some smooth texture, as well as having um, a painterly type te texture as well. Uh, so, and I also like to blend with my round brushes, and I said this in a, in a pass again. So I'm coming in with a little bit of that fan brush to blend out that you just seen. So now that I have my background and my table ground in, I'm going to work in my light mask. So right now I'm working in the shadow mask. When you're working in your shadow, you want to think about uh, edges. So the closer the shadow is to the object, the sharper those edges are. The further away, um, the lighter, the more uh, transparent. Uh, those shadows become so the shadow is going to have some darker areas and lighter areas it's not going to be a completely black shadow you don't want a black hole that's what you don't want <laughs> so now I'm working uh, within my light mask area and I'm still uh, touching on some of uh, my edges in my shadow um, before I actually get into the areas for my light mask so I'm working from dark to light uh, normally on oil you also want to you always 
uh, the rule is you work from dark to light. That's kind of the rule. Sometimes some people work from light to dark, but um, traditionally the rule is dark to light. So I'm working in my dark mask. I'm using those darker values of 9, 10, sorry, 9, 8, 7, and 6. I need to get my numbers right. <laughs> uh, and then also you will see me apply um, a little bit of 5s. 5s is that bridge before you get to your shadow edge or your terminator, bed, butt line, whatever you want to call it. So I'm working my way towards um, my, my shadow edge, my terminator. So as you can see, I'm putting in all those dark values in. I will eventually start to work on the core that's in the shadow. You don't want to forget to have your core in your shadow mask as well as your reflected light in your shadow mask. So we already worked on our cast um, shadow. So now I'm working on getting a core and also a reflected light in. So right now I'm working on the core. As you can see, I'm blending um, as I'm going. Once again, I still... Um, if I'm dipping into my gamsaw, it's because I'm switching from one color to the next. Um, but I am not thinning out my paint at all right now because we already did that in the underpainting stage. So I'm just using paint on top of paint on top of paint. You can blend on your canvas as well. Um, so I'm still working in my shadow mask. Now I'm going to start slowly um, working into my light mask. I'm coming in dark on my light mask because as that form turns, it gets a lot darker. So it's going to lighten up as I start to put in other values for my light mask in my uh, kitchen container cup. <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. So you can start to see what I'm actually doing. I'm starting to bring in some of those sixes and fives. Um, although I'm looking at this and now that I'm seeing the recording playback, I kind of wish I would have gotten a little bit lighter um, and uh, the container where the highlight of the, the light is hitting. I, I probably should have went into maybe a value two or a value three <clears throat> in some of those areas, but it's okay. <laughs> On the next one, I'll do that. Uh, but now you're starting to see I'm moving in to my value one, two, three, and four for my light mask. And now that my light mask is in, you can start to see that core is beginning to pop. Also, you can see the reflected light. So the rule is you do not want your reflected light to be darker than any of the mid-tones in your light mask. Because remember, reflected light is still in the shadow. So it's a lot darker than what you probably think you're seeing it. So if you look at the photo, in the photo it reads very, very light. Um, but I know what the rule is, and the rule is my reflective light needs to be darker um, than any mid-tone in my light mask. Alright, so you can see I'm blending in that core shadow with my uh, value 5. So I'm working out that shadow edge, tweaking it out. Bringing in some more of my light mask colors, so those values are light mass values those values of one through um, five and um, for most of uh, for most of this container I am using my round brush because once again I love to blend with round brushes something about round brushes that I don't know I love a lot of artists don't really like round brushes but I do um, another thing I want you to guys to think about as well when you're painting uh, edges everywhere not just so much in your uh in your cast shadow but if you look at the edges that are around the container i have some hard edges some soft edges some lost edges um so you want to pay attention to your edges you don't want to have hard edges everywhere you don't want it to look like a cutout that's pasted onto this canvas um you want to do your best to allow to allow that painting to have the illusion of that this is a three-dimensional surface um, once again, uh, we are we are kind of lying on our canvas. <laughs> We're trying to tell our viewer, hey, this is a three-dimensional surface or a three-dimensional object, although it's on a two-dimensional surface. Uh, so you want to, that's the goal. You want to be able to sell that this is something that's real, but it really isn't. It's just an illusion. All right. So guys, I'm going to work on getting my camera to focus properly I know all my videos are like that um, but I'm working on it <laughs> I'm gonna have a student work with me so I'm excited all right 
So as you can see, I'm getting to a place where I am just about done. Um, I'm just tweaking out some areas, darken out some areas, um, getting kind of my darkest darks in. I'm working in the beak. Um, the beak, uh, just some a mental note. I'm working in that shadow edge where you see a darker area, you see the reflected light. I'm probably going to darken the reflected light just a bit. My cast shadow is actually still my underpainting. So I'm allowing some of that underpainting to shine. So I didn't even paint it in. Ooh -hoo. That's what underpaintings are for. So I'm getting in my highlight. So remember you have a, har a hierarchy of highlight. So hierarchy meaning that um, there's going to be a highlight that's really, really bright. There's probably a secondary highlight that's probably not as bright as the first. And then a, a so on and so forth. Like a third that isn't as bright as the second one. So you want to think about highlights in that nature. So just tweaking out a little last minute thing. Taking off my tape. Yay! Taking off the tape. Woohoo! Okay, we're almost done with this. Yes! Alright you guys, so this is my little Grisai painting. So I'm going to go ahead and let it dry because it's completely wet. Remember I did it all a prima, I did it all in one day. So um, in class on Thursday, um, we are going to do a Grisai and it's going to be an a la prima because it's going to be all in, in one day. Are all in three hours I think that's what we got is three hours um, so hopefully this helps um, this help you get an idea of what we're going to be doing in class as well as what you're going to be doing for homework so once again this is a girl's eye painting and it's an achromatic painting that we also are going to do in a la prima so uh, hopefully this help and I will see you guys in the next demo <laughs> in the next video. Bye, you guys.